What's up guys and welcome to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Unreal Engine 5. It's been almost a year, if not a year, since Epic Games first revealed to us that cinematic trailer uh, showcasing the new features of Unreal Engine 5 including lumens and nanites and some of the other features that we're already accustomed to like the chaos physics. And now, finally, in spring, early summer of 2021, we finally got early access. So, I'm running uh, Unreal Engine 5 version 5.0.0.0. This is the first early access version. Came out almost two or three hours ago. So, this is the project browser, and off the bat, things look different. But, if you're familiar with Unreal Engine 4, you should know where everything is. On this project browser, we've got different sort of templates for Unreal Engine. Of course, Unreal Engine is more than just games. You can do automotive design, architecture, film and videos, but the one that we're gonna be focusing on is our games. So on the games tab, we've got these eight options here. We've got the blank template, which gives you nothing, no code at all, first person template, a little puzzle game, third person template, top down, handheld AR for mobile phones, virtual reality, and a car game. If I go onto the third person, first person um, project template, you can see here that we've got a few options down here. We've got a bit of a summary describing what it is, but what we're interested in is down here. Now, Unreal Engine 4 has, Unreal Engine 5, similar to Unreal Engine 4, has got two options, either Blueprint or C++. So instead of do using the visual editor, the node-based editor inside of Unreal Engine 5, you can use Visual Studio and do C++ direct to the engine. You can set the target platforms here, there's either desktop or mobile. You can choose the quality, so maximum or, or scalable. Enable starter content, this basically gives you uh, little bits of example content like audio, some props, materials, and of course, you can enable ray tracing. Now, if you've got a ray tracing capable card, you will be able to use this. Any NVIDIA card after the 20 series or any AMD card after the 6000 series. So, I'm going to enable... In fact, I'll, I'll leave this off and then I'll do a video about ray tracing separately. So, let's do a third pers first person uh, project. So, of course, down here we can set the project location. And then over here, we can give it a name. I'm just going to leave it My Project 3. And if we go and click Create, things are going to look a bit different on the splash screen. Those of you who've already used Unreal Engine should know that we've now got a nice image here. And here we go. So this is the new editor. Things look a lot different. Now, if you're already used to Unreal Engine, you'll be able to pick up where you left pretty quickly, as you can see. The scalability is still there. You can still modify the windows and tabs. But to you who are new to the engine, of course, it's very, very simple. Unreal Engine is a great engine because it is so simple and linear. Because of its um, usage of these tabs up here, you can drag elements around and resize things as you wish. I'm just going to leave it as default for the time being. For you who are starting out in Unreal Engine, the default layout should be perfectly fine for you. It gives you everything that you need all on one screen, but you can adjust things. And if you've got a larger screen with more real estate, you can size things up and scale things down to get more detail on things. If you do change some of the user interface elements of Unreal Engine 5 and then, uh, and then want to change it back, go to a Window, then go to Load Layout, and then select the default editor layout. And of course, if you're more familiar with Unreal Engine 4, you can always go to the classic layout. I'm going to leave it on the default layout for the time being. There we go. So, things also do look a bit different. Where's the content browser? It's down here, now in the content drawer, and it gives you a sort of dockable window, which, which you can move around. There we go. So, again, let's, let's just ignore those. So, the whole engine has got a redesign, essentially. 
um, as opposed to Unreal Engine 4, which used a sort of Windows 7 sort of button icon theme, we've now got a modern flat theme. So let's go over some of the windows. Of course, down here we've got our command prompt for our games. Of course, you can launch that separately. We've got our content browser here. We've got our details panel here where we can modify different elements of the um, meshes that we're looking at, the different blueprints, the rotation as well. We can do all of that, all of that fun stuff. Up here, we've got the world outliner, which is a hierarchy of the map. So, of course, up here, we've got the map, and then we can make folders and store different things inside of the folders. On the default template map for the first person shooter, the lighting is kept inside of its own folder, and all of the physics cubes are kept inside of their own folder. There we go. Up here, we've got our sort of toolbar. This part in the middle here gives us all of the options for the um, modes which we've got. So the first mode is our normal selection mode where we can pick up things and move them around the map. The second is our landscape editing mode where you can create, import, uh, and modify landscapes. The third is our foliage tool where you can add foliage to the map and then add grass or trees. The fourth is our vertex mesh painting. The fifth is our fracture editing mode. This is good for physics and chaos physics. And the fifth is our brush editing tool, where we can introduce brush meshes into the game and easily scale them here. We've also got our cinematics tab, where we can make level sequences. These are for cinematics, for cutscenes. And here we've got our blueprints uh, tab here. Inside of our blueprints tab, we can open the level blueprint. We can open blueprint classes and we can do overrides for the game modes for players. Over here, we've got our content browser selection um, menu. So if you have more than one screen and want content browser on another screen, you can open up one here and then drag this to wherever you want. Finally, on our create, we've got a, a um, menu where we can select everything like lights, shapes, and actors and volumes. So for example, if I wanted to introduce a post process volume into our game, I'd go down here to volumes post-process volume and then from here I can f and then I can change its scale inside of the map using our details panel like so there we go now there's more than one way of changing the size of things inside of the engine I'm gonna go and use this um, little box here as an example if you press space on your keyboard you can cycle between the um, the translation modes. So you can cycle between the movement, the rotation, and the scaling. So on this one, I can scale it up here just by holding down this and then dragging my mouse. Alternatively, you can select the modes from up here. There's also um, shortcuts as well. Q for select, W for um, movement, E for uh, rotation, and R for scaling. Up here, you can change the snapping of the grid, or you can disable it completely. So if I were to go up to here, and then uncheck that, it goes from blue to white, and then when I move things around, they no longer snap. But if I were to enable that, and set the snapping to something like 500, when I move it, it snaps uniform. There we go. But the same can be done for rotation and for scaling. Up here, we've got the camera speed option. So at the moment, I'm moving at a moderate speed. But if I were to go up to camera speed 8, I move around the map rather quickly. The movement speed of the camera can also be adjusted by the uh, scroll wheel on the mouse while you hold down the right mouse button. There we go. So as you can see, I'm holding down the right mouse button and I'm scrolling up and down and I can change the speed of the camera. Up here you can change the viewports, so if you want more than one viewport, there you go. That's how you do it. And then you've got top, sides, and back views of your level. And of course, you can change the lighting modes. Okay. To restore this, just click on any one of these, and then there'll be a full screen again. To change the different shading modes, go up here to where it says lit, and then you can do unlit, wireframe, 
and detail lighting. These might be some of the only ones which you'll end up using, but it's helpful to have them. All of these options here. Let's go back to lit. So that's alt and full. Cool. Oh. Right, so now let's take a look at the blueprint editor. So let's go into the blueprint of the level. And we can do that by going into blueprints and then open level blueprint. And then that opens up a new window here. And this can, of course, just like Unreal Engine 4, be docked to the main screen. To undock a window, just drag off of it and then go into the center of the screen and then you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to redock it. There we go. So you can move around the blueprint editor with the, your right mouse button and of course zoom in with your scroll wheel. Over here you've got your details panel. This is particularly useful for different uh, nodes with different properties. And of course you can introduce functions, macros and variables and event dispatches here. You can add components to a blueprint with this add button here and then you can add whatever you want. There we go. Okay, so let's go and check out the first person BP. So the first person BP is where the mechanics of the um, first person shooter are. So under here we've got four different elements. So we've got the first person projectile, the herd, the game mode, and the character. So let's go into the first person character. And of course, what you can see here is that we've got all of the game logic for the um, mechanics of the game. So, just like in Unreal Engine 4, everything is pretty much the same. Everything looks identical. And the main purpose of this is just to make it so that Unreal Engine 4 projects are completely backwards compatible with Unreal Engine 5. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that concludes this short introduction video to Unreal Engine 5. I do hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to uh, leave a like on this video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.